Hey! Hey! I'm Mr. O, here with another oh, yeah! moment at the Children's Museum of Houston. Well, it looks like someone had a really good trick-or-treating, but maybe you've all had enough. What are you planning to do with the rest of your candy? Oh, definitely not eat it. Well, you know there's some pretty cool science experiments you can do with your candy. Does it involve eating? Because I can't do that. No, no more eating. Do we have to move? Yes, you're going to have to move, but trust me, it's worth it. Candy has some really cool chemical properties. Here, let me show you. Before we begin, remember, science is fun, but it can also be dangerous. So always have a responsible adult helping you. For this experiment, you'll need a bowl of water and some M&Ms or Skittles candies. Place some of the M&Ms and or Skittles candies letter side up into the water and observe. Wow, check out the colors. Good observation. The dyes in the candy coating are soluble in water, meaning they dissolve in water. So the colors come off the candy and into the water. Now watch the letters. Whoa, they're floating to the surface. Correct. The letters are printed onto a wax coating. The wax is insoluble in water, meaning it doesn't dissolve. So it just floats to the surface, taking the letter with it. Speaking of dissolving, that takes us to our next experiment. For this experiment, you'll need two cups and some sour candy. You'll also need an indicator solution. Sour flavors are typically caused by a category of chemicals called acids. For example, a lemon is sour because of the acid in its juice. An indicator is a chemical that changes color in the presence of certain chemicals. For example, this indicator changes color in the presence of an acid, as you can see by mixing some of it with the lemon juice. So if we add the sour candy to the indicator, we can determine if it is an acid making the sour flavor. Wow, check out that pink. It looks like the lemon juice, so it must be an acid making the sour flavor. The indicator solution isn't that hard to make. All you really need is a red cabbage, Tear off a couple leaves, add some water, and put in the microwave to boil, about five to seven minutes. Once it's cooled down, you can pour it back into the exact same container you used it and put it in the fridge to store it. It's a perfectly good solution. It'll measure both acids and bases. You know, speaking of using a microwave, I thought of a third experiment to do. For this experiment, you'll need marshmallow-based candy, a microwave-safe plate, and a microwave. Put the candy onto the plate and then put it in the microwave. Heat it on high for 45 seconds. Watch what happens. Marshmallows are basically a sugar foam. As the air in the foam is heated, it expands, causing the marshmallow to expand. However, the heat causes the sugar to melt, so eventually the expansion stops as air escapes through the melted marshmallow. Be careful, marshmallow gets very hot when heated in the microwave. Let it cool for a moment or two before handling. As the air inside the candy cools, the marshmallow begins to shrink back down, but it won't go back to the way it was due to the fact the sugar melted too. After it has cooled for a minute, and so it is safe to touch, Feel the candy compared to an unheated one. It will feel crisper because moisture was also lost during the heating. This has been another Oh Wow moment from the Children's Museum of Houston. We hope your mind can come out to play. <laughs>